Flame ionization detector, or FID, is the most commonly used detector in gas chromatography besides mass spec. FID has excellent sensitivity for carbon-containing compounds. In fact, the signal is proportional to the number of carbons within that molecule. Compounds that don't burn are not detected by GCFID. This is a simplified version of an FID. So here's our diagram. This orange bit is the jet. This black tube in the center is our electrode or detector itself. This squiggly bit up at the top is our ignition coil. Sometimes it can be a heating element that's gonna light our flame. And then we've got various tubes coming into the system to allow us to do the detection. So down here, this lower tube is where your carrier gas and sample come into your jet. So your carrier is either helium, hydrogen, or nitrogen. The side tube here is where the fuel comes into the system and it mixes with our carrier gas and sample. The fuel for your FID is pure hydrogen. You can get that by using either tanks or by a gas generator. This upper tube is where the air comes into the system and it mixes with the gases within the chamber. Again, your air can be supplied by either a zero air generator or by tanks. Here we're gonna have our fuel and air mixed together in the proper ratio. That proper ratio is a mixture of air to fuel in a 10 to one ratio. So the Lucidity GCFID uses 300 milliliters per minute of air and 30 milliliters per minute of hydrogen. When the air and fuel mixture is correct, the heating element is red hot and then the jet lights producing a very hot flame. You can see it light up there and we've got our flame here. You may even hear a pop as the jet ignites. But take care not to look directly at the flame. It's invisible to begin with and it's extremely hot and may burn you. The body of the jet in, is going to be our anode and the electrode here is going to be our cathode. Um, the difference between the two is a several hundred volts for a potential difference. Uh, it doesn't really matter what that is. Just know that there is a potential difference there. Adding in the sample into the flame causes it to burn and give off ions. Those ions are then attracted to the cathode, resulting in a signal that is displayed on the computer screen in real time. The plot of that signal versus time is your chromatogram. This introduction of your sample into the jet is crucial in getting good results. If the column isn't placed just right, your results will suffer. So if you've got a broken end on your column, you could get vortexing, which will allow for uh, noisy peaks. If your uh, column is too far into the jet, it could heat up, resulting in your stationary phase being baked off, giving you some uh, unwanted results. So with the Lucidity GCFID, you don't have to worry about your column being too far or not far enough into your jet. It's taken care of by our column holder. So this was just a rough overview of a GCFID and how it works. Check with your institution or with proper literature to see if your molecule is proper for GCFID detection. Please like and subscribe and make sure to click the bell icon to receive more content from Lucidity.